Once Final Cut is open, sometimes you might see the desktop kind of all messed up like this, where the windows are not in the correct place. The best thing to do to get back to the default window is simply go to Window, Arrange, and Standard. And that will fill your screen with Final Cut and make it a lot easier for you to work. Uh, I'm just going to delete this bin uh, folder and I'm going to re-import my pictures. Once you go through the setup, which is in the previous video, what we need to do is import all of those files that we've collected. And I like to do um, import folder, but I'm going to show you how to import the files today. I'm going to go to my directory where my little house is located and I'm going to go down to a folder called color and here it is. Now because I've done import files I can just grab all of these together by holding the shift key and click the word choose which is down at the bottom right. Once I click all those pictures, each of those images, if I double click them up here in the bin, will be in my bin. That does not mean that they're in my project yet or in my movie. It simply means that these are the pictures that I'm going to use for my project. In order to get the pictures into the project, we need to drag them from the bin up here down to the timeline. But at this time, before you go any further, you will be, if you don't do this now, you will be prompted to save your project. So I'm going to go ahead and save my project as. I'm going to go into my scratch disk folder. I'm going to go into the art video too. And I'm going to save this project as color. So this is the bin, this is the folder that you've set up before on your scratch disk that will house or hold all of the information that you need for the file for the project. In order to start assembling my timeline, I simply drag the image or the picture from the bin, which is up here, and I put it down on the timeline. You notice that there's a small yellow, a small black arrow. Be sure the arrow is facing down, not sideways. We'll go over that later. So here, if I hit the play, if I hit the play button over here, this is the picture that's in my project, and the picture is just sitting there because I haven't done anything to it. What I'm going to do now is drag the next picture that I want in my sequence down onto the timeline. And as I move my playhead from here, it will cut to the next picture. Now these pictures have this border on the side up here, which I'm not really crazy about. So what I like to do is sort of make that a little bit bigger and just fit the picture inside the window. And I think that's a little bit more professional. And I'll do that with the first picture also. You simply click on the picture, drag the handles, and make it a little bit bigger. Just be careful that you don't crop out anything that's important at this point. We can change the view over here of this window. I can make it big where it fits into the window so I can see. And now if I hit play, this is what essentially my movie will look like. It'll just simply cut to the next picture. If I want to enlarge things and um, make things a little bit bigger or smaller, I need to see this sort of gray area so that I'll be able to make my picture smaller if I choose to or larger. Now the other day we talked about having two pictures play at the same time. And to do that, we simply drag the picture up and place it on top of the other picture. Obviously I can't see both pictures, so if I double click this picture in the timeline, it will select it. I can make it smaller and move it over. And now I have sort of a PIP look, which is not really what I'm going for. I'll double click the second picture and I'll make that a bit smaller too, so that both of the pictures will now be playing at the same time line those up. I can also go to back to fit to window and I can use this transparency to sort of change the size of the picture. And there I have, if I go to the beginning, I have nothing on the screen and then both the pictures pop up at the same time. If I wanted one picture to pop up before the other, I still double click this and I simply drag the beginning part 
so that it makes the picture a bit smaller. And now my movie will begin with this picture playing and then in a couple of seconds the second picture will pop up and then they will both go off the screen at the same time. Before we do anything else, what I'd like to talk about is transitions and many of you are familiar with, I'm going to make this one a little shorter, I don't like how long they stay on the screen. Many of you will be familiar with transitions from PowerPoint. So if I go up here in the, in the corner, you'll see an effects tab and then you'll see a folder called Video Transitions and that's up here in the corner. If I pop that triangle open, I'll see that I have all of these different folders. And right here I have um, a folder called Dissolve. And for this I'm going to use an Additive Dissolve or Cross Dissolve. As I move my playhead back and forth, I notice that it sort of snaps to the middle part. And you can turn that on and off by, using, by simply clicking the letter N. The snap helps the program find the exact frame that will enable us to add the transition. If you're not on the frame, you won't be able to add the transition. If you're not on the where the two frames actually meet, right here. So if I turn the letter, if I click the letter N, you'll notice as I get closer to that, I have these two small triangles. That's going to tell me that I can add a transition. And all I'm going to do for this cross dissolve is take the transition from the bin and drop it right onto my timeline. And if I go just ahead of the cross dissolve, watch what will happen. One will fade into the next. You can change the duration of the cross dissolve using the selection tool by simply dragging that out again. And in order to see this effect, what I'm going to do is make these full screen again. Because I think you'll be able to see it a little bit better. If I go down to 12% and I make this full screen, I select this picture and I make this picture full screen. And right here as I play again, you'll see one cross dissolving into the next. And I think that's beautiful. To get back to the view where I can see all my images, you simply hit Shift Z, or you can just simply zoom back out. So here's our first picture. It plays on the screen. We do a cross dissolve. And then we have a beautiful transition into the second one. I'm going to delete the cross dissolve and show you a 3D simulation, which is called Cube Spin. I do the same thing. I drop it right in the middle. I can make it last. I'm going to make it a little slower. The longer it's on the, on the um, timeline, the slower it will be. So here is Cube Spin. It's kind of cool. Anyway, you can just simply delete and try all of these other uh, images. So what you'll do today is to put your pictures on the timeline and add the dissolves or the transitions. And then tomorrow we'll make some titles and add some music.